Exactly. Uh, let, let me just share those links here for you. And uh, thanks, Dwayne, for the insights. We don't have time for questions, very sorry. Uh, but you do have the contact data for, from Dwayne McDaniel. Um, I think this is a perfect uh, end of a really valuable Mordic conference. No, it's not yet the end. We do have the closing session. So please, everybody, head over to the closing session, and we see you there. I can promise we have a nice little surprise for you. OK, see you there. Bye bye. Thank you all. Bye bye. Oh, and th thanks, Dwayne, of course. Thanks. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome to my talk, Stop Committing Your Secrets, Get Hooks to the Rescue, here at Monic Conference Global 2022. I'm Dwayne, I live in Chicago, Illinois. I am a developer evangelist at Get Kraken, and I help people figure stuff out. Uh, outside of tech, I love karaoke, live music, improv, uh, knitting and crochet. If you ever wanna talk about that stuff, hit me up on my Twitter, always happy to help you out. I work for Get Kraken, we make legendary Git tools. Git Kraken Client, which helps you use Git on the desktop, uh, an easier, safer way to get to the advanced power features with just drag and drop. If you're using VS Code, I highly recommend installing GitLens. It's free, it's open source, and will help you expose authorship information at every line of code, give you uh, access into CodeLens and a bunch of other power tools to use Git successfully in more advanced ways in VS Code. And Git integration for Jira does just what it says on the box integrates Git with Jira in a way that developers can just stay in the normal workflow and still get Jira updated. Meanwhile, stakeholders all know what developers are doing and nobody has to disrupt their workflow to get that done. Much more efficient way to work if you're working with repos. But I'm here to talk about Git and security. And why am I doing that at Modic Conference? Well, we all use Git, 95% or so, according to some recent numbers. And we push that code to a couple different places. We push it to the servers where it actually runs in his production code, whether that's AWS or Google Cloud product or Azure DevOps or somewhere on the cloud or in our local machines. And then we push that code somewhere, either again, um, a service like GitHub or GitLab or Bitbucket um, or internal Git servers that we set up with like Git T or what have you. And to tie all this together, we have secrets, passwords, credentials, um, certificates that glue everything together. Those secrets get leaked out at an alarming rate. In 2020, uh, Git Guardian State of Secret Sprawl report uh, found 2 million keys in the public. And 85% of those were in places where they shouldn't have been. Personal re repos instead of the lockdown organizational repos. You can have the best security in the world, the best security practices on earth, but if you leave a key out front or someone just finds the key, they're gonna get in. And the more complicated the security, the more likely we are to do something like this, where it's really a complicated lock and we're slowing down people from getting in whatever's in that room. Maybe it's pens and staplers or something that's not mission critical. So we, we take a shortcut. And of course it's a silly example, but this is a real example. People hard coding just to make sure that a database works, just to make sure that an endpoint is up, just to make sure those credentials are correct. People do this day in and day out. And there's really no harm if we do this and then immediately take it back out. The problem is we don't immediately take it back out and we leak these secrets everywhere. Now, this gets magnified based on how Git itself works. So Git takes snapshots every time you make a commit, that's what it's doing, it's taking a snapshot of your file system in that directory. It's not a diff, it is a full blown snapshot of what's going on and then add branches to that and merging and it starts getting really complex. So if you added something uh, way back here and um, then committed it, but then remember to take it out up here, these commits still exist. They're still accessible. You can still get at them and get to those secrets. On top of that, we have secrets that transverse literally all of these services that make up CI CD pipelines these days. Now, it gets super awesome, but it doesn't make your code more or less secure by itself. It does have a mechanism to give you uh, a way to exclude entire types of files. So if you use things like a secrets.json locally or .aws slash credentials folder locally, uh, you can exclude those and generally that's a great practice. And if we all did that, we'd be done with the talk. However, we're talking about hard coding secrets here. Now, I know that this talk and other talks like it aren't gonna stop devs from testing secrets. There's no way around that. Sometimes you just have to test it. What we can do though is 
talk about how to stop from committing those secrets. Because if you commit a secret and then push it, you're going to have a bad time. And there are a lot of tools, some awesome tools, that will detect a secret after it's pushed. And theoretically, yeah, you could pull those secrets back out. But man, that's painful. Just rewriting history manually with Git is painful. On top of that, there's a whole layer of trust that gets eroded immediately because, well, you leaked a secret. Now we have to rotate keys. True story, I know someone that had to rotate 5,000 keys in their org because the way they wrote a script brought back in plain text one password. That was detected 5,000 keys later, literally days of work. They finally got back to a safe spot. Nobody was happy there. Don't let that happen to you. What we need is a robot. What we need is a robot that will flawlessly every time execute, stop you from committing a secret if you try to commit a secret. And Git will let us build that robot with Git hooks. If you're not familiar with Git hooks, there is a hooks folder inside of the .git folder in every single instance of Git you'll ever run into. And Git hooks basically let you build your own contraptions. When something happens in Git, go fire off what's ever in that script. There are 17 hooks available. I highly recommend visiting githooks.com. Matt Houston has done an amazing job of laying out in very plain language how to use these things effectively. Uh, but for today's purposes, we know that there are three hooks that happen before a commit actually gets executed. Pre-commit, prepare, commit message, and commit message. You can insert logic into those that will fire off before the commit actually gets made. So there are examples for uh, example code in each of the hooks examples that get automatically generated when you initialize a Git folder. These are written by Gitster and Linus and other folks like that, uh, very meant to be very helpful to, for their use case. But you can insert any logic you want. This is something to actually run personally. I love this the little hook. Uh, when I make a commit message, it spits out a dad joke at me and I love dad jokes. You're not limited to just bash. You can script with anything you want. It's like it's script. It's just, if you have a scripting language you prefer, script in that. So the solution would look something like this. Every time I go to commit, something should check my code and if I hard coded any secrets, throw an error and don't let me make that commit. You can build this yourself with a little bit of know-how, uh, a little bit of scripting foo. Uh, there I'm using git grep to check for strings that look like they're setting passwords or using some complex uh, regex to say, if I have anything that's 20 characters long that contains numbers and letters, go ahead and spit me an error. And in practice, it looks like that. So you can do this all day. However, then it's on you to keep building it. Then it's on you to keep evolving it. And then it's on you to sell it to your team. There's a lot of things to worry about if you're building this all on your own out there. Luckily, the team at AWS Labs built this for you. It's called Get Secrets, and it's freely available. It's open source. The example I showed you earlier, I pulled out of their actual code and modified a little bit to show you all. Get Secrets is very straightforward. You install the tool on your machine like you do any other tool. Um, you, you can actually tell Git to uh, go ahead and auto install it on all repos. Uh, then you just run Get Secrets, register whatever you want to register, AWS, um, or you can set your own patterns, add your own uh, prohibited or allowed patterns. Allowed patterns are important because you don't want a false positive if you have like an example password that just says example password. That's not a real password, but hey, it's a nice placeholder. Um, Get secrets will uh, trigger every time you make a commit and it's a robot that stops you from making commits. What this actually looks like uh, is it will look for these specific secrets, uh, including allowed patterns and known credentials from your uh, AWS credentials folder. It adds very little to um, your actual Git hook. It installs it in multiple Git hooks, so you're triple checking every time you do a commit. And then the pattern secrets are just stored in your .git slash config, um, and that's what it looks like from a code perspective. And in action, it not only tells you, hey, there's your error, but it also gives you some other uh, suggestions on how to fix it and how to mitigate those things. And you might be thinking, like, that's great for AWS, but what about me? I use Google Cloud or Azure DevOps. Good news, it's open source. Someone's already forked this. Someone's already made those additions. So you can just add provider to add whatever you're using and then modify it for your own specific needs. So don't hard code your secrets. I, I know no one's going to stop hard coding secrets because of this talk, but you can stop committing your secrets through some clever use of automation. Leverage open source. We're all in this together and people are sharing their best practices all the time. So I'm Dwayne. Thank you for watching. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me.
uh, on Twitter or <clears throat> directly at my email there. Thank you very much. I'll look forward to your questions online. Exactly. Uh, let, let me just share those links here for you. And uh, thanks, Dwayne, for the insights. We don't have time for questions. Very sorry. Uh, but you do have the contact data for, from Dwayne McDaniel. Um, I think this is a perfect uh, end of a really valuable Mordic conference. No, it's not yet the end. We do have the closing session. So please, everybody, head over to the closing session, and we see you there. I can promise we have a nice little surprise for you. OK, see you there. Bye-bye. Thank you all. Bye-bye. Oh, and th thanks, Dwayne, of course. Thanks. <laughs>